Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to start with a new topic and that is Fastify. Specifically, we will look at how to create a new Fastify application and then we will focus our discussion on the Fastify plugin system and the principles of encapsulation. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon. So without wasting any more time, let's start. To begin with, what is Fastify? Fastify is a node-based HTTP framework. You could use Fastify to build backend applications such as APIs and microservices. But what makes Fastify different from the plethora of web frameworks out there? For starters, as per the official claim, Fastify is one of the fastest web frameworks out there and can serve up to 30,000 requests per second. Fastify is also highly extensible due to its plugin based architecture that we are going to get into more detail in this particular video. Lastly, Fastify follows a schema based approach. It uses JSON schema to validate routes and serialize requests and responses. So how do we get started with Fastify? Well, it's fairly easy. We will create a project directory using mkdir fastify demo plugin. We will now move into the project directory and execute the npm init command with y flag. This will generate a package.json file for our project. The y flag simply answers the questionnaire in one go. Now we will install fastify using npm install fastify command and that's all that is needed to get started with a basic fastify application now that the package is installed we will move into visual studio code and open the project folder all right so here we have a basic project structure our package.json file is ready it contains the basic metadata of the project. There is only one dependency in the package.json file that we installed, that is Fastify. Now we will create a file named index.js and we will start writing some code. First step is to require the Fastify package and calling the underlying function. In the function call, we pass an object with a single property logger set to true. This will bring in support for Fastify's inbuilt logging system. Next, we declare a route. The Fastify instance has a method named get for HTTP method of get. This takes two parameters as input. One is the path itself. Second is the callback. The callback has two inputs, request and reply. Within the callback, we will use reply.send method to send a response back to the caller. Just a simple hello world would do. Now we can run the server. For this, Fastify provides a listen method. It takes the port number as input. We give the port number as 3000 and then there is a callback with error as one of the parameters. If there is an error while trying to start the server, we will simply use fastify log to log the error and we will terminate the node process by calling process.exit with exit code of 1. Here 1 stands for fatal unhandled error. So with this our server is ready. We can check it out by executing the command node index.js in the terminal. If we visit the browser and hit localhost 3000 we will see the hello world message. So things work fine. Now let's get into the main part of our discussion and that is a plugin. So what is a plugin in Fastify? Plugins form the foundation of a typical Fastify application. You could think of a Fastify application as a collection of plugins that are tied together to perform some meaningful task. The basic syntax of a Fastify plugin goes something like this. It is simply a function with a signature that consists of three parameters. 
First is Fastify. This is the Fastify instance. Second is an options object. Third is the done function. You call the done function when your plugin is ready. We can do a bunch of things inside the function. We can register routes. We can define utilities. In fact, a plugin can also contain other plugins. But how do we use it in our application? To use a plugin, we need to register the plugin with Fastify. And we can do that by using an inbuilt API known as register. The register API creates a new Fastify context. So inside the curly braces, the Fastify instance we have is totally different from the one outside. Basically, this means that any changes to the Fastify instance within the context will not be reflected in the parent context. This is the basis of encapsulation in the Fastify plugin system. But how do we make changes to the Fastify instance? For that, Fastify provides another API known as Decorate. The Decorate API allows us to customize the Fastify instance. We can use this API to attach any type of property to the Fastify instance. Let us attach a small utility to our Fastify instance within the plugin A. We will rewrite Fastify.decorate. Then within parenthesis, we first provide the name of the utility. And in this case, that is multiply. Then we have the second argument, which is a callback function. For our utility, we have two input variables, A and B. And as output, we return the multiplication of A and B. To use this utility, we can simply call the multiply method with 10 and 6 as the input and use console.log to log the results. At the end, we call done to indicate that our plugin is ready. If we run the application now using node index.js, we will be able to see 10 multiplied by 6, that is 60, printed on the console. Basically, the multiply function worked fine and gave us the required response. Now imagine that we had another plugin. Let's call it plugin B. We place it right after plugin A and just like last time, we register it in the Fastify context. Within the plugin's body, we again try to call the multiply utility. What do you think would be the response this time? Let's run it and check. As you can see, we get an error. In fact, Fastify simply could not understand that multiply is even a function. This might seem strange, but as discussed earlier, every time we call the register API, Fastify creates a new context. Whatever happens within one context is not available in another context. In other words, plugin A and plugin B are residing in two separate contexts and as a result, they don't share functionality. In fact, even if we call fastify multiply in the parent context or the main context, we still get the same error. Basically, the fastify context within the plugin A is encapsulated from the parent as well as the sibling context. But there is another case here. Let's say we register a plugin within the plugin A itself. Basically, we call fastify register after the decorate call and use it to register another plugin. Let's name it plugin child. It, it also gets the three usual parameters, fastify, options, and done. Within the body, we call the multiply utility function with a different set of inputs and log it to the console. And then we call done. If we run the app now, we can see that there are no errors. In fact, both the calls to multiply were successful. This means that plugins inherit functionality from their parents. Encapsulation applies only to ancestors, 
and siblings but not the children this all sounds great but many times we need to share functionality across two plugins for example we might implement a plugin for connecting to a database and we want to expose the same connection throughout the application for such purposes fastify provides a special package known as fastify plugin once installed we can require it in our index.js file now we can again try calling the multiply utility in plugin b if we run the application now this time there is no error we see the sibling context printed in the console along with the result of the multiplication so that was all about the fastify plugin system for this particular video and how you can leverage the encapsulation aspects in plugins if this video was useful please do like and comment we will be bringing more such videos on a range of topics in the coming days see you until next time